Hello. Can you hear me? Hello, teacher. Hi. Good to see you and hear you. <laughs> okay, today we have uh, Rosino Amilcar, Claudia Janet. There is Francisco Isaac, Jenny Sanchez, and Imelda Sanchez. Okay, are you cousins? No, probably not. Okay, you are Sanchez and Sanchez. Okay, um, let's begin. I'm going to start um, sharing the screen with you. And uh, here we go. It's over there. Can you see it? Can everybody see yes. the screen I'm sharing? We okay, can. great. Yes. Okay, excellent. All right, um, everybody welcome once again. This is Inglés Intermedio Modulo 3. And that's me, Ivan Doñan, at your service once again. And it's Intermediate 3, Session 7. Today is October the 19th, 2022 or 2022, as you prefer. Let's begin. Well, uh, yesterday we studied the present perfect continuous. We completed the topic. Today we have something else, a new piece of grammar that we need to study. Well, actually two pieces of grammar that we need to study. It's um, not difficult, you will see. Let's see who else is joining us right now. Manuel Aristides is also here. Hello, Manuel, welcome. There we go, just give me a second. Okay. Hi. Hi. <laughs> okay, this is the lesson objective. This is section three now. By the end of this class, participants will comprehend how to use present participles and past participles as adjectives. Okay, sounds complicated, but it's actually very easy. You will see. Let's take a look. It's raining here, by the way. Okay, I hope the class is not interrupted. Is it raining where you live right now? It's raining here Ooh. too. Oh my uh, God. A little bit. Oh my God. problemas con el internet. Bueno, lo mismo digo de antemano. Yo, esperemos que no, ¿verdad? Pero... Ojalá que no. Ojalá que no, ojalá que no. Ok, fingers crossed. Con los dedos cruzados, ¿verdad? Fingers crossed. Ok, so um, let's do this. So this is the information I was talking about. Adjectives ending in ing and ed. Those are participial adjectives or participial adjectives also called. Let's take a look. Many adjectives end in ing and ed. You can see a picture right here. This is Matthew. You see poor Matthew. And you have two adjectives. One ends in ed, the other one ends in ing. The first one is bored and the other one is boring. So there's a text right here and I need a volunteer. Who can help me read this, please? I just want you to read the text for the class. Imelda, thank you. Matthew has been doing the same job for a very long time. Every day he does exactly the same thing again and again. He doesn't enjoy his job anymore and would like to, to do something different. Okay, thank you. So yeah, Imelda just helped us. Again, I'm going to read it for pronunciation. Matthew has been doing, you see, present perfect continuous. Matthew has been doing the same job for a very long time, many years. Every day he does exactly the same thing again and again. He doesn't enjoy his job anymore and would like to do something different. Now, we have two sentences here. Take a look. Matthew's job is boring. Sorry. Matthew's job is boring. Matthew is bored with his job. Now, take a look at this. Somebody is bored or gets bored if something or somebody else is boring. If something is boring, you get bored with it. So take a look. Matthew is bored because his job is boring. Matthew's job is boring. So Matthew is bored. Now, what happens right here? We have two types of adjective. 
okay? You have the adjective that ends in ed and the adjective that ends in ing. They are similar, but uh, only in appearance. In meaning, they are a bit different. Let's compare adjectives ending in ing and ed. My job, this is an example. No es mi trabajo ahorita, <laughs> es un ejemplo. You have, my job is, for example, boring, interesting, tiring, satisfying, etc. Okay. Adjectives that end in e ing show you how something is in general. Okay. In these sentences, the ing adjective tells you about the job. Okay. The job is boring. The job is interesting. The job is tiring. The job is satisfying, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The adjective ending in ing indicates how something is in general terms. Okay. Now, I say, for example, if my job is boring, I am bored with my job. When I say I am bored, this is how I feel, okay? This is not how I am in general. No, this is how I feel because of my job. Second example, my job is interesting. If my job is interesting, then, well, um, let's say that my job is not interesting because the, the, the example is a bit different. I am not interested in my job anymore, you say. This is how the person feels. My job is tiring. I get very tired doing my job. The job, you can use the word satisfying. If the, if the job is not satisfying, then I can say I am not satisfied with my job, etc. In these sentences, the ED adjective tells you how somebody feels about the job. Okay, so again, Adjectives ending in ing tell you how something is in general. Adjectives ending in ed tell you how somebody feels depending on the circumstances. Let's take a look at this picture. The teacher is explaining this, but the lesson is confusing. So what happened to Susie? Susie is confused. That's how Susie feels. She feels confused. She's like, what? What is this? Okay. She is confused because the lesson is confusing. Or maybe the explanation from the teacher is confusing. All right. The lesson is confusing. Susie is confused. Okay. Uh, muchas veces cuando yo les pregunto a mis alumnos después de un fin de semana o de un día de trabajo, ¿cómo, ¿cómo estuvo? Les digo, ¿cómo estuvo el día? Y la gente me dice, ah, teacher, my day was tired. Pero yo les pregunto a ustedes, ¿estará correcto eso o incorrecto? Se lo voy a poner acá. Incorrect. It's incorrect, okay? Mm -hmm. Why? Si me dice alguien, my day was tired. I ask you, is that correct? Uh, Rufino Amilcar said it's incorrect. Yes, no correct. What is, uh -huh, what is the correct form? Mm -hmm. My my day was um, tiring. What? Tiring, like this. Okay. Uh -huh. This is correct. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay, Rufina Milka is right. If you say, my day was tired, this is incorrect. Uno no puede decir, 
Bueno, en español uno dice, estuvo bien cansado el día. Ok, uno entiende. But in English, you don't say, my day was tired. You are tired. The day was tiring. That's the difference. ¿Qué pasa con los adjetivos en ing? Un adjetivo en ing produce un efecto sobre la persona. Si el día estuvo bien pesado, ¿verdad? Entonces decimos es tiring. Y cómo se siente la persona es algo diferente. La persona se siente cansada. Entonces, tired with ed. That's the difference right there. Do you understand? Hello? Yes, teacher. Yes, yes teacher. Okay. Yes, yes okay. teacher. Vamos a ver, si estamos hablando de una película. Tenemos los adjectives interest, interesting, interested. What about a movie? Can a movie be interesting or interested? Which one? Interesting. interesting. The first option, right? That is correct. And what about the person who watches the movie? Interested. Interested in ED, correct. Mm -hmm. Con estos ejemplos es sencillo entenderlo, pero cuidado porque hay unas ocasiones en que no es tan fácil ver la diferencia. Veamos esto. What about a person? Is a person interesting or interested? Interesting. Interesting, I-N-G. Yeah. Okay, Natalie, what does Natalie say? Natalie wants to participate. Interesting. With I-N-G, okay. Yeah. Can a person be interested? Yes. It can be both. Puede ser ambas. Si digamos es una persona que cuando está hablando con usted, ¿verdad? Dice cosas bien agradables, bien interesantes. Le cuenta su experiencia y usted dice, puchica, qué chivo. Wow. Ok. Entonces la persona es interesting. Y usted que le está escuchando está interested. Así que una persona, a una persona le puede aplicar ambos pero tienen significado diferente. Lo mismo pasa si fuera boring o bored. ¿Ok? Una persona puede ser boring o puede estar bored. Si le habla a usted y usted dice, este que habla, uh, ya me contó sus vacaciones como tres veces, solo hablando del sobrinito pasa. Que no tiene que decir otra cosa. So the person is boring. A usted le está aburriendo. ¿Y cómo se siente usted? Bored. Mm -hmm. Ok. That's the idea. Mucho cuidado ahí. Sorry, time. I'm sorry. Any story time, teacher. <laughs> yeah, totally. So you see, that's the thing. Okay, a person can be interesting or interested. A person can be boring or bored. It all depends. Okay, so be careful right there. Let's see some more examples. You have this interesting, interested. First example, Rosa thinks politics is interesting. Cuidado, pareciera que esto es plural, la palabra politics, pero en realidad es el estudio de la política. Aunque lleva una S al final. Por eso se dice politics is. Okay. So Rosa thinks politics is interesting. So Rosa is interested in politics. So interesting is how politics is in general. And interested expresses how Rosa feels. Second example. Did you meet anyone interesting at the party? Are you interested in buying a car? 
What about the next example? Surprising. Surprising. Take a look. Surprising. It was surprising that he passed the exam. Wow, he didn't study. He didn't do the homework. He didn't go to class, but he passed the exam. That was surprising. Okay. El hecho que haya pasado es sorprendente. So it was surprising. So how did the people feel? All the classmates. Everybody was surprised that he passed the exam. Everybody said, this is not possible, right? He didn't study. He didn't do the homework. He didn't come to class, but he passed. Mm. Okay. Everybody was surprised. Next example, disappointing. Ah, the movie was disappointing. We expected it to be better. Yeah, fue decepcionante. The movie was disappointing. What about disappointed? We were disappointed with the movie. We expected it to be better. This is how we felt. We felt disappointed because the movie was disappointing. ING. Finally, we have shocking. The news was shocking. Aquí hay otro ejemplo de una palabra que termina con S, pero no es plural. Ok, la palabra news, que es las noticias, ¿verdad? Aunque en español se diga en plural, en inglés no se puede poner en plural, pero así se dice, news. No me van a decir the news were shocking porque estaría equivocado. Sería the news was shocking. O sea, good news. Parece plural, pero en realidad no lo es. So, the news was shocking. I was shocked when I heard the news. This is how I felt. So, if you see, adjectives in ING express how something is in general. Politics, interesting. The fact that he passed the exam, that's surprising. The movie was disappointing. The news was shocking. The adjective in ED describes how a person feels. Rosa, she's interested. You are interested in buying a car. Everybody was surprised. That's how they felt. We were disappointed. We felt disappointed. I was shocked. I felt shocked. I was like, oh my God. That's the idea. That's the difference between adjectives in ED and ING. Not very difficult, but you have to pay close attention because you can get confused easily. Okay. Now, to check comprehension, we have to do an exercise. Okay. So, how many people are there today connected? We have 13 people. Let's see. We're going to form uh, some breakout rooms, but not many, only three breakout rooms. Okay, let me check. Okay, three breakout rooms, that will be enough. No, four, okay. All right, breakout rooms. Room one, you will have, uh, we have Luis Alonso, Manuel Aristides, Michelle Escobar, and Rufino Amilcar. Room two, Imelda Sanchez, Natalia Alejandra, and Paola Maria. Room three, Alejandra Magaña, Claudia Yanet and Olivia Osorio. And in room four, we have uh, Francisco Isaac, Sonia Guadalupe, and Jenny Sanchez. I'm going to form the breakout rooms and I'm going to send this picture, you know, the exercise via WhatsApp. So everybody, please join your groups now, please. Ah, before that, let me explain. I'm sorry, I forgot. Complete the sentences for each situation. You have to use the word in parenthesis plus ing or ed as appropriate, okay? So the movie wasn't as good as we had expected, so you have disappoint. You have disappointed or disappointing, okay? So you need to complete the sentences right there. Okay, I'm going to open the breaker rooms. Everybody, please join them now.
por favor trabajen todos con su, con su equipo. Eh, algunos de los compañeros están teniendo ciertas dificultades para entrar. Voy a ver cómo les asisto. Pero mientras tanto, por favor, trabajen en los, en los grupos. Hello, teacher. Hi, I'm going to send Hi. you to one of the rooms, okay? I'm going to assign you to room two. Hello, ¿cómo vamos? Hello. Hi, teacher. Hi. Two, Anna works, Anna works uh, 12. 12 hours a day, but she enjoys her job. Yeah. Ex exhausting, uh, often exhausting, exhausting, the letter E, la A, Letter H is exhausting. 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 No, with ing. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exhausting. Correct. Ing. And letter B. And B. At the end of a day, work. Exhausted. Exhausted. And that is exhausted. Exhausting. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. Exhausting. Okay. Uh -huh. Number two. The far the, the part three. It has been raining all day. I hate this weather. The press. The press. This weather is oppressive. A and G. Le letter letter A. A and G. The pressing, the pressing. 
Mm -hmm. This weather is depressing. Depressing. It's deprimente. It's depressing. Depressing. Yeah. Okay. Please continue. I have to visit a different room now. See you in a few minutes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. The last, she is really, really exciting about excited, going to Mexico. Uh -huh. Exciting, yeah. excited. Excited, going easy. Which one? The yeah. she of the five. Okay, letter, letter number five, letter C. Yes. yes. Okay, she, okay, can you help me read number five, the whole, the whole exercise, A, B, and C? Please. Claire is going okay. to Mexico next month. She has never been there before. So you have excite in parenthesis. What about letter A? It will be an ex exciting experience for her. Exciting, I-N-G. Mm -hmm. Correct. Uh -huh. Letter B? Going to new places is always excited. E-D. E-D. Okay. Uh, are you sure? I think that express mm -hmm. our feeling or mm -hmm. reaction. But in this case, we're talking about the action of going to new places. So exciting. 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 ING. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Es ir a lugares nuevos es emocionante. Si decimos excited with EG, sería ir a lugares nuevos es emocionado. Entonces ahí no. No concuerda, ¿verdad? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sería en este caso, okay. exciting. And letter C. It's really exciting. I'm excited about going to Mexico. So which one is it? ING or ED? ED. ED, correct. She is really excited about going to Mexico because we're talking about how she feels. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, very good. I Thank have you. to, you're welcome. I have to uh, visit a different room now. Uh, in the, uh, well, as I do that, please uh, review the answers. Okay, just check that everything is correct. Okay, I'll be back. Okay. Excited. I think it is exciting. Going to new places is always exciting. Places is, is always exciting. Yeah. So it's, really it's exciting. Number five, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So let's see. Claire is going to Mexico next month. She has never been there before. So letter A, it will be an exciting. Exciting. ING, right? Yeah. Yes. Exciting experience for her. Correct. Very good. Letter B, going to new places is always? Exciting. Um, again, please. Exciting. Yeah. ING again. Yeah. Or ED. I, ED. Yeah, okay. Vamos a ver. ¿Quién dice ING? ¿Quién dice ED? I say that it is ING. ING. The answer is ING. Okay. Going to new places is always exciting. Porque estamos hablando de la acción de ir a lugares nuevos. Por eso es exciting. No es la persona, sino la acción de ir es emocionante. Si no diría ir a lugares nuevos es emocionado. No, mm -hmm. no concordaría ahí. Pero entonces, exciting. En letter C. Excited. Excited. ED, right? She is really excited about excited. going to Mexico. Ok, good. All right, thank you. I have to go to the final room. Um, see you in a few minutes. Bye. Bye. Um. Hi. Hi, Estela. 
Hi, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. I'm trying to assign you to a, a, a group. I sent you to room four. Okay. Uh -huh. If you can join it. I'm going about to join the same room right now. De ahí mismo y la puse abajo, solo le agregué. Hello. Um, finished, Have you finished? Okay, very good. Yeah. Yes, we finished. No, no, visita Estela. No finish, no finish. <laughs> finish. Okay. 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 Copy, uh, Stella. Copy, paste. <laughs> okay. Number, what about number three? Okay, can you help me read number three, please? Teacher, la uno y la cuatro está repetida. En serio. I'm sorry. <laughs> lo, lo, hice no, lo hice a propósito para ver si estaban ah, bueno. poniendo atención. I'm sorry. <laughs> tengo, tengo que corregir eso, entonces. Lo lamento. Okay, well, what about number three? Number three. It has been raining all, all day. I hate this word. Letter A, this word is depressing. Depressing, correct. Letter B. Letter B is word, as he said, is a teacher word. Weather. Weather. Mm -hmm. This weather makes me depressed. Depressed. Uh -huh. Depressed. And it's silly to it, get. It's silly. Sorry. It's silly. Mm -hmm. es, es tonto, it's, dice. Uh -huh. it's silly. It's silly to get uh, depressed, depressed. Depressed with ED. Because, because of the weather. Mm -hmm. Correct. It's silly to get depressed because of the weather. So it's tonto to ponerse así triste por el, por el clima. Okay, good. Okay, um, I'm going to close the breaker rooms now. See you in one minute. Okay. Bye. Bye. Okay, everybody, I'm about to close the breaker rooms now. I'll see you in one minute. Okay, so um, number one, I need a volunteer, please. Olivia, okay, Olivia, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. The movie was not as good as uh, we had uh, expected. Uh, in the letter expected, mm -hmm. uh, letter A. Uh, the movie was uh, disappointing. Yes, the movie was disappointing. In the letter B, we were uh, disappointed AD, by the movie. Yeah, we were disappointed by the movie. That is correct. Thank you, Olivia. Now, Amirkar will help us with number two. Uh, Hannah works 12 hours a day, but she enjoys her job. Letter, e, letter A, she, she enjoys her job, but that is often exhausting. Mm -hmm. 
exhausting. exhausting. I-N-G, exhausting. right? Exhausting. 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 And letter B, mm -hmm. letter B, at the end of a day's work, Anna is exhausted. 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 Mm -hmm. exhausted. Correct. At the end of a day's work, Anna is exhausted. Very good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Amirta. That is great. Por ahí veo la, la cámara de Claudia, cómo se ven los rayos al fondo que hasta la asustan mira así para atrás okay. <laughs> what about number three please I need a volunteer number three who wants to participate Michelle okay Michelle it has been raining all day I hate this weather this weather is depressed depressing depressing this weather, yes this weather makes me depressed. Depressed. It's silly to get de depressed because of the weather. Correct. It's silly to get depressed because of the weather. Dice. Es tontito ponerse así deprimido o triste por el, por el, por el tiempo, por el clima. Okay. It's silly. That's, that's the meaning of silly. Como tontito, ¿verdad? No tiene sentido. Okay. Uh, Luis, le vamos a dar la número 5 porque la 4... Está repetida. <laughs> I apologize. Me disculpo. Y no me fijé que había la misma, es la misma número uno. Así que the movie mm -hmm. was disappointing. We were disappointed by the movie. Ok. Lo hice a propósito para ver si se fijaba. No, mentiras. Equivocación mía. Ok, Luis, number five. Number five. Mm -hmm. Claire is going to Mexico next month. She has never, never been there before mm -hmm. letter a it will be an exciting experience for her correct going to new places is always excited ed ed yes okay but be careful we are talking about the experience not about claire So going this to new places exciting, is always exciting. Going to new places uh -huh. is always excited. Um, ED or ING? I'm sorry, ING. ING, okay, yeah, that's correct. Yes. Also, Manuel Aristides gave us the correct answer too. So uh, going to new places is always exciting, okay? Because we're talking about the experience of going to new places. It's always exciting. Si usted dijera esto en español, sería como ir a lugares nuevos, siempre es emocionante. emocionante. Si le dejáramos ID, sería ir a lugares nuevos, es emocionado. Ahí como que no concuerda, ¿verdad? Entonces es exciting. Ok, and letter C, Luis. Letter C, she's really excited about going to Mexico. Correct, she's really excited about going to Mexico. Excited. Okay. Hey, wait a second. There's a mistake here. I made a mistake here. A mí se me fue mal esto. Tendría que ser excited. Vamos a hacer la corrección pertinente. El color estaba bien, pero no la respuesta. <laughs> I'm sorry. So she's really excited about going to Mexico. I'm going to save. Give me a sec. She's really excited about going to Mexico. Uh -huh. She's excited with ED about going to Mexico. Okay, good. That's very, very good. Before we continue, does anybody have any questions? Is this clear? Is the, is the topic confusing? Are you confused? It's clear like chocolate. It's clear like chocolate. Okay. It's clear like, know, like water. Like, okay. I it's, it's, I know, I know. It's it's clear like water from Aselwate River. Okay. Nice. <laughs> okay, so no questions. Okay, if there aren't any questions, we will continue with the next topic. Okay, vamos a cubrir un poquito de terreno aquí para esto. All right, so, well, next objective, take a look. By the end of this class, uh, participants will learn to use relative clauses 
in order to join two ideas into one. This is not difficult, it's actually very easy, okay? New topic, relative clauses with who, which, and that. Now, take a look. This lady says, I can speak six languages. Okay. Now, I have two sentences here. I met a woman. That's sentence number one. She can speak six languages. That's sentence number two. So, she is a person. That means I can use the relative pronoun who. We use the relative pronoun who for people. So if I want to join the two sentences together and have only one sentence, then I say, I met a woman who can speak six languages. Conocí a una mujer quien o que puede hablar seis idiomas. Very intelligent person. Again, you originally you had two sentences. I met a woman, that's sentence number one. She can speak six languages, that's sentence number two. If you want to join the two sentences into one, then you say, I met a woman who can speak six languages. And this is a relative clause, who can speak six languages. That's the relative clause. This is only an example, but there are more. Let's take a look at the second one. Now, this is Jack. Look at Jack. You have two sentences. Sentence number one, Jack was wearing a hat. Okay. Sentence number two, it was too big for him. Look at the hat. It's enormous. Okay. So again, sentence one, Jack was wearing a hat. Sentence number two, it was too big for him. So the pronoun it can be substituted with the relative pronouns that or which. You can use that or which for things, not people, for things in this case. So if you want to join the two sentences into one sentence, you can say, Jack was wearing a hat that was too big for him. Y llevaba un sombrero que era muy grande para él. Or you can say Jack was wearing a hat, which was too big for him. Que viene a ser lo mismo, verdad? Jack llevaba un sombrero que era muy grande para él o el cual era muy grande para él. ¿verdad? So that's the idea. When you use relative clauses, you have two separate sentences, but you join them together into one sentence. That's the thing. So the explanation goes like this. Who is for people, not things. Be very careful right here because who is only for people. And you have four examples, okay? A thief, right? A thief is a person who steals things. Un ladrón es una persona que roba cosas. Okay, a thief is a person who steals things. So pueden fijar acá que las relative clauses son muy útiles para dar definiciones. Si un niño le pregunta a usted, mira, ¿qué es un ladrón? Ah, un ladrón es una persona que roba las cosas de los otros. Entonces, en inglés le pregunta a un, un niño chiquito a usted, what is a thief? Usted le dice, a thief is a person who steals things. Así que esta, um, este tema de gramática es muy importante para dar definiciones simples. Muy útil, muy útil. So the second one, do you know anybody who can play the piano? ¿Conoces a alguien que pueda tocar el piano? Okay. You have the man who called didn't give his name. El hombre que llamó no dijo su nombre o no me dio su nombre. So the man who called didn't give his name. And the last one, the people who work at the office are very friendly. They are nice, nice people. So the people who work at the office are very friendly. So remember, who is for people, 
Again, the first example says, a thief is a person who steals things. Who refers to the thief. Do you know anybody who can play the piano? Who refers to anybody? It's a person. The man who called didn't give his name. Who refers to the man? The people who work in the office are very friendly. Who refers to the people? So again, who is for people only, but not things. What about which? Which is the opposite. Which is for things, but not people, only things. Example, an airplane is a machine which flies. ¿Mm? Un avión es una máquina que vuela. Emma lives in a house which is a hundred years old. Cuando ocupamos which aquí, ¿a qué se refiere? ¿Se refiere a Emma o se refiere a la casa? A la casa. A la casa, así es. Mm -hmm. Which is only for things, not for people. Very good. So Emma lives in a house which is a hundred years old, which refers to the house. In the first ex example, I'm sorry, an airplane is a machine which flies, which refers to the airplane or the machine. Now, careful right here, don't use which for people. Okay, no vayan a ocupar which para las personas. You say, for example, do you remember the woman who played the piano at the party? This is correct. It's good. But if you say, do you remember the woman which played the piano at the party? It's incorrect. Okay. Because you're talking about a woman. You have to use who, not which. Before we continue, do you have any questions? Michelle. We can use that with the person, for example, do you know anybody that can play the piano? Absolutely. Yes. Y justo okay. eso vamos. <laughs> okay, let's take a look. That is for people or things. Aquí nos preguntaba Michelle, ¿verdad? Si podemos ocupar that. Y la respuesta es sí, podemos ocupar that, precisamente. Ahora, algo que tengo que aclarar es que el tema de Relative Clauses es un poco más complejo que lo que estamos viendo. Vamos a estudiar Relative Clauses a un nivel, tal vez eh, a su nivel más básico, porque el tema es un poco más extenso de lo que vamos a ver. Bueno, no un poco, es bastante más extenso. Pero por lo pronto vamos a irnos a la parte más básica de los Relative Clauses. Esto de ocupar that es posible dado el tipo de relative clauses que estamos viendo. ¿Ok? Hay otro tipo de relative clauses que no admite that. ¿Ok? Así que eh, no okay. podemos tomar esto como una regla general y decir, ah, se puede ponerle that a todo. No, no a todas. Solamente a estas que vamos a ver acá. Más adelantito les voy a explicar la diferencia. ¿Ok? Pero por lo pronto, sí, se puede ocupar that con las personas y con las cosas, ¿ok? So that is for people or things. Vamos a ver los mismos ejemplos, solo que ahora con that. An airplane is a machine that flies. Emma lives in a house that is 100 years old. A thief is a person that steals things. Do you know anybody that can play the piano? The man that called didn't give his name. The people that work in the office are very friendly. Ok. Así que por lo pronto, ¿verdad? Si usted tiene dudas y dice, no sé si voy a ocupar uh, who or which. Bueno, puedo ocupar that porque se puede con los dos. That es para personas y es para cosas. Así que si tiene duda, ocupe that. Por lo menos en este tipo de relative clauses. Ok. Hay otro tipo en el que no se puede. Usted tiene que elegir entre which or that. Pero eso... Es tema para otro día porque se pone un poquito más intenso, digamos. So, for people, who is more common than that? You can use that and it's good. But who is more common? For example, do you know anybody who can play the piano? It's good. And it's more common than, do you know anybody that can play the piano? This is also good. 
but it's less common. Es menos común, pero también está bien. Okay. So yeah, uh, answering Michelle's question, you can use that for people and for things. Okay. So what are we going to do here? There's an exercise. Your turn. Choose from the boxes and write sentences. Follow the example. Well, there is no example. I'm going to give you number one as an example. Or you can tell me. Look at this man right here. He is dishonest. He doesn't tell the truth. He is a liar. A liar. Mm -hmm. A mentiroso. So he's a liar. So what about this? Can you give me a definition for this? You say a liar, right? If you say this in Spanish, it will be like un mentiroso o una mentirosa es una persona que no dice la verdad. Es una persona que dice mentiras, etc., etc. Okay, so that's the thing. But um, right here, we have to uh, do the exercise in order because there's a specific order of animations in the presentation. So let's begin with this one. We're going to try to do this together. Vamos a tratar de hacer esto juntos. De acuerdo. Uh, we're not going to go into the breakout rooms for this. So let's try to do it here together. Oh, wait a second because the exercise is a bit complex. Let's see how many people are there. There are 15. Groups of three then. No, we're going to work together in groups of three. I think I prefer I prefer it that this way, okay, so that you can help each other. I'm going to form new groups now. Let's see, um, options, okay. So there are 15 people, so five groups. All right, the groups are divided by like this. Uh, room one, Alejandra Magaña, Michelle Escobar, and Rufino Amilcar. Room two, Claudia Yanet, Luis Enriquez, and Manuel Aristides. Room three, Estela Lara, Luis Alonso, and Olivia Osorio. Room four, Francisco Isaac, Natalie Alejandra, and Paola Maria, alguien se desconectó de pronto, bueno. Room number five, Sonia Guadalupe and Jenny Sanchez. Okay, I'm going to open the breakout rooms, but first, uh, let's do the first one as an example. What about a thief? What is a thief? Who wants to give me a definition? You have to use, aha, uh -huh, that, uh -huh, that's in, in, in Spanish, right? But what about the English definition? Alejandra. Person who steals things. Mm -hmm. Entonces, si lo ponemos todo junto, ¿cómo nos quedaría? A thief, digamos, a thief is a person. Digamos eso hasta ahí, ¿verdad? A thief is a person. Who steals things. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you, Michelle and Alejandra. So, a thief is a person who steals things. Un ladrón es una persona que roba cosas, ¿ok? A thief is a person who steals things. Entonces, vamos a ocupar ese mismo modelo y vamos a decir, a butcher is a person who, y ahí sigue, ¿verdad? Si necesita ocupar el diccionario, hay que ocuparlo, ¿no? O les preguntamos al compañero. O me preguntan a mí cuando visite el, 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 cada uno de los cuartos. Ok, everybody, I'm going to open the break and rooms. Please join them and I'm going to start visiting you. And I will send this via WhatsApp too. Everybody, the exercise is already in the WhatsApp chat. You can check the chat now. You will find the exercise there. I'm going to join the first group now.
Que, si, que silencio en este grupo, ¿qué pasó? Ya, no sé por qué no nos hablan. Ah, people, communicate. That's the idea of the breakout rooms. <laughs> you need to talk. Uh, what about number two? A butcher is a person who sells meat. Correct. Yeah. A butcher is a person who sells meat. Un carnicero, mm -hmm. right? A butcher is a person who sells meat. Nice. Okay. Uh, please continue. I have to go into another room, but communicate, okay? Talk. <laughs> okay. Amen. Yes. Number four, number uh, okay. Uh, the, uh, the three, a music, music, music musician, uh, musician, musician, who who play plays a musical instrument. So, what's the complete sentence, please? A musician. A musician who, is a person. Is a person. Is a person who plays a musical instrument. Correct. A musician is a person who plays a musical instrument. A music instrument. Very good. Sorry. What about number okay. four? A patient. Number four. Uh, a, a, a patient. Patient. A patient, a patient. A patient is, uh, is a, no, is a person. A patient is a person. It's a person who is it's a person. Ah, yeah, yeah. Inspiral. Correct. Okay. Uh, Claudia Yanet said a uh, uh, patient is a person who is sick in the sick. hospital. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. El paciente. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. El paciente. <laughs> okay. He's sick Number. in the hospital. Okay, good. I'm going to visit a different room now. See you in a few minutes. Okay. Thank you. Is the letter a fool? It's a person, it's a person does foolish things, still things. Is letter F? No, perdón. Ah, eh, lo que está diciendo Donis, don, eh, señor aquí es que la, el número 6 es literal G. Yes, sí. A genius is a extraordinary intelligence. Okay, but what's the complete sentence? Yeah. I, I heard you were in number 6, a fool. ¿Cómo quedaría eso? A fool, a fool is a person who does, who does foolish things. Ah, correct, that is correct. Yes. A fool is a person who does foolish things. Yes. Bueno, no sé, tal vez yo escuché yes. mal. Okay, uh, correct, that's good. Yes. What about a genius? The genius a person is a person intelligent. A genius is a person Is ah. extraordinarily intelligent. Intelligent, okay. A genius is a person who is extraordinarily intelligent. Correct. Okay, very good. I'm going to visit a different room now. See you later. Okay. See you later, teacher. Have you finished? No. Not oh. yet. And no yet. And the uh, six. Number six. Okay. Veamos esa. Number six. Mm. It's a person that does foolish things. Okay. Ocupando that. También se puede, ¿verdad? A fool is a person that does foolish things. Mm -hmm. 
Como decía Forrest Gump, así vieron la película, dice, tonto es el que hace tonterías. <ríe> Solo que en inglés dice otra cosa, un poquito distinta. Pero sí, a fool is a person who does foolish things. That's right. Okay, please continue. I have to uh, visit the final breakout room and then I'm going to uh, close them and we'll check answers and finish the class. See you in a few minutes. Okay. Have you okay, finished? Finished it. <laughs> Good. What about number seven? A genius mm -hmm. is a person who is extraordinarily intelligent. A genius is a person who is extraordinarily intelligent. Extraordinary. That is correct. Mm -hmm. Extraordinariamente, right? Extraordinarily intelligent. Extraordinarily. Okay, very good. Okay, I'm going to close the breakout rooms now. See you in one minute. Okay, okay, teacher. Bye. Bye. Okay, everybody, I'm going to close the breakout rooms now. See you in one minute. Forty five seconds. Okay, um, time to check answers. Number two, volunteer, please. Let's check answers and we can finish the class. Olivia. Your, your microphone, Olivia. Excuse me. Okay. A voucher is a person who sells meat. That is good. A butcher is a person who sells meat. Correct. Very good. Thank you, Olivia. Michelle, number three, musician. A musician is a person who plays a musical instrument. That is correct. A musician is a person who plays a musical instrument. Very good. Thank you, Michelle. Claudia Yannette, number four. Number four, a patient. I <laughs> a patient is... A person who is sick in the hospital. Patient is a person who is sick in the hospital. Very good. Thank you, Claudia. Uh, number five, Estela. A dentist is a person who takes care of your teeth. Takes care of your, of your teeth, right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's right. A dentist is a person who takes care of your teeth. Very good. Okay. What about number six? Volunteer, please. Thank you, Estela. Very good. Number six. Come on. Okay, Paola. A uh, fool is a person who does foolish things. A fool is a person who does foolish things. That is correct. Very good. Okay. Um, Olivia, number seven, and Manuel Aristides will take number eight. So, Olivia. A genius. A genius. Is, uh, 
allí es, uh -huh. es a uh, 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 is 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 a person who is extraordinarily intelligent. Correct. Okay, a genius is a person who is extraordinarily intelligent. Thank you, Olivia. That was very good. And the last one, Manuel Aristides, please. A liar is a person who doesn't tell the truth. A liar is a person who doesn't tell the truth. Okay, like the man in the picture. Okay, very good. Bueno. Quiero que todos, por favor, vayan avanzando en la plataforma, ¿verdad? Ya tendríamos que estar en la sección número 3. Vamos aquí rapidito. Yo sé que ya nos pasamos, pero saquemos esto. Uy, cuando necesita uno que se apure esto, no se apura. Ahí está. Ok, section 3. Ok, section 3, please. Uh, all right. Miren, justo hoy que necesito que salga todo esto, no salga. Bueno, ahí está. There's an objective, what's playing. Partic uh, past participles is adjectives. Well, participles is adjectives. This is a key particles, pero debería ser participles. As adjectives, es lo que vimos hoy. Esto, por favor, vayanlo haciendo. Está el knowledge check. Luego están los, esto es lo que vamos a ver mañana, opinions, ok, nos saltamos un poquito para ver este tema que es un poco más importante, pero es vocabulario, lo vamos a ver mañana bien. Así que eh, recuerden, mañana es jueves, mañana terminaríamos esta sección, así que vamos a completarlo y vamos a ver también, así en general, lo del midterm, porque justo después de eso sigue como el examen, que tenemos que completarlo para el día de mañana, ¿verdad?, Así que nos quedamos hasta acá. Por favor, eh, sigan con las lecciones en la plataforma. No nos retrasemos para que después no se nos acumule. Ok. Everybody, thank, thank you. you very much. Gracias right. por su See paciencia. You See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Good night.